the great master, the Gyawa Kwetsangpa, he said very clearly the essence of the Pardo teaching is non-attachment. No? He said very clearly, and that is very, very simple. Why is it Pardo practice, essence of Pardo practice, non-attachment? Because imagine that tomorrow if we are going to die, you know, what are the, f what are the fears that we will fear? All the fear and the pain we'll fear is because of attachment. People say that, oh, I'm not afraid of death, you know, I'm, <coughs> it doesn't matter. Maybe it's because those of us who say like that have not really put ourselves in a place of, you know, how the dying process might feel. Today, if we lose our job, lose our husband, lose our wife, children, you know, apartment, your car, even your favorite handbag, you know, is taken by your sister without your permission, you know. So much of pain, you know, right? You know? But you can say, ah, dying, no problem, you know. But think, you know, when you are dying, you are not leaving your handbag, you have not lost your husband, you have not lost, you are losing everything. You basically, we lose the very, all in all of us have certain pride, such an identity that we hold on to. I am self-made something. I am this thing. I am a father. I am a mother. I am everything. All of these things will be suddenly taken away from you without any warning. There will be no company saying you will be terminated. Three months and a golden handshake, you know. Nothing, you know. It's just suddenly terminated. How can we say that, you know, no, I don't have any fear. I don't have any pain. Especially if you die suddenly, maybe you are lucky in that way, you know. But if you know, if the process of dying, you know, slowly, the slow death comes, you know, definitely there will be lots of pain and lots of, you know, the pain. But good news, you might say, is that we can understand where this pain comes from. The pain comes from the attachment, right? right? If your sister borrowed your favorite hand, not your favorite handbag. You thought that, ah, oh, she took my favorite handbag and then when you check again, it is the handbag that you didn't like. Suddenly the pain has disappeared. <laughs> when we practice cutting down attachment, you know, in many levels, for example, directly, you know, the directly cutting down the attachment practiced, you know, that's kind of, you know, from especially from the uh, the, you can call it the sutrayana way, is generosity. You know? Whether it is offering to Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, whether it is giving to sentient beings who are going through suffering, you know, because every time we do offering, you have to cut the attachment. The fact that you know, every time you do, when you do offering, you, if you are able to do offering genuinely, means you have been able to cut attachment to that amount or that value, you know, that's that part of the value, right? If you're going to beggar and you check your pocket, I say, oh, hundred dollar, no, put it back, you know. Five dollar, oh, okay, no problem, right? That means you're able to let go of the five dollar. If you can't even do that, you know, that means even five dollar you cannot let go, right? So every time we do offering, I always, you know, always you know, remind people that, I always like to remind myself that every time we do offering, it is for our benefit, not for the Buddha. It is not that Buddha needs our offering. It is not that, you know, that Buddha likes flower. You know? It is that we want to accumulate merit. That is the one. Second is we want to reduce the attachment. Right? Right? Because, and so that is why even offering also, you know, you do not need to, you know, of course, I think that it's very wise to be environmental friendly, for sure. But other than that, you don't really need to ask somebody, you know, ask somebody, what should I offer, what should I not offer? You know, whatever you like should be offered. If not real, at least mentally. If you are very attached to your husband, you should offer your husband to Guru Padma Sambhava, you know. Maybe not green tara, you may feel a little insecure, you know. <laughs> <laughs> then you can offer to Guru Padma <laughs> you know, your wife to green tara, you know. 
we human beings are very strange, no? We think we get, you know, insecure about. <laughs> so, so since, you know, in our prayers, we cannot really put like that, right? We cannot put, you know, argam means your husband, you know, padam means your wife, you know. No, it's, it, then they are, because they are, everybody have some diff variety of things that they're attached to. Some are attached to power, some are attached to fame, some are attached to money, some to children, etc., etc. So <clears throat> that is why we categorize the offering into, we call it five sensory offerings. Right? What you find beautiful, be it your flower, be it your appearance of somebody, or be it appearance of your home, your car, your clothes, your bag, all of these are you know, the something that gives pleasure through the sight. So that is why, you know, the offerings are offering all the things that appear beautiful to my eyes is offering. All the sound that is pleasant to my ears, not only the bell, the music, etc., everything from Justin Bieber to Taylor Swift to, you know, Chinese Zita to everything, or even the compliment is a sound, right? We love to be complimented. And because we love compliment, we cannot take criticism. You know? Attachment, desire always produce the hatred. Right? It, is, it comes together. So, and then similarly, we like taste. Right? That is why we go to restaurant and if the, or maybe in our Boeing 747, we are still in the airline, no? no? The food is not very good. We'll complain to the stewardess and we'll write a complaint letter also when we land, you know, because of the taste, right? The attachment to the taste. And then attachment to the touch, the sensation of the touch, the cloth, physical touch, the warmth, etc. So the five sensories and the smell too. So all of these offerings, you know, the offering that we do reduces our attachment. And in terms of the merit, you know, we say that in terms of law of karma, it works in such a way that if you offer something beautiful to, you know, the others, offer or gift, you receive something beautiful. Flower is, I think, the karma to have a beautiful form, you know, either offering music or speaking kindly to others, is the karma for you to receive the, the you know, always pleasant sound and pleasant news, etc. In day-to-day -day life also it works. When you speak kindly to others, they also speak good to you. If you speak harsh to others, they will also speak harshly to you. You say the generosity is the cause of the, you know, the wealth. And I think it is very true because the wealth is something that you can utilize it. You can't really own anything. You may have a very nice house right now, you know, and you th we think that I own that house. But the question to ask ourselves, do, I, do we really own the house or do we have the authority to utilize it? Because if we really own the house, after we are gone, how come, how come there's somebody else who says I'm the owner? And before we bought the house, there's somebody else who was the owner. So, you know, so uh, generosity gives us, reduce our attachment that we have ability to utilize what we have. So anyway, the attachment to the, the so these kind of offerings, you know, that we do are ways to reduce the, 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 the first level of, you know, the attachment, you know, first level of attachment directly re reduced through that. Now the second level of you know the reducing the attachment are through the practices such as yantik practice, the Tara practice, the visualization practice. For these practices, you know, we instead of saying that you know I offer flower to the Tara, or I offer, of course, in the Tara practice also we do the you know, but there is a little bit kind of a deeper practice of not only not only offering the flower, but realizing the non-existent of the flower. So, when we are able to, you know, the understand 
you know, through the visualization, the non-existent or not or undefinable. I I I will prefer the word undefinable. Because when we talk of non-existent, immediately the image that comes to our mind is empty, you know, like nothing, like an empty cup. But when we say undefinable in our it is not something that I made it up also, even in the our sutras it is said, it is called the Muzung Tewa. Mo Muzung Tewa means nature. Nature of all the phenomena cannot be defined because to define something means something has to exist. I define that this exists as a gold because gold is real. Then you have defined it. But then what is gold? Gold is also made up of certain other metal elements. Yet it is not something that is empty, nothing but that nothingness. Like the scientists say, you know, that when the, the Big Bang happened, they say the space exploded into reality and this universe came about. You know? Similarly, the, the very emptiness has, you know, is the form. It appears as a form. That's why we say emptiness is form. Other than emptiness, there's no form. It's, so it is kind of, a, you know, that, that is why I will say undefinable. And our job is not really to define it, but to break down other definitions. You know? That is the essence of the practice. So when we are anyway, so when we you know understand that, when we understand that all the you know the so-called the firstly we reduce attachment through the you know the offering. Another thing is that yes, another one of the reason another reason why we do in mean, offerings, be it the mandala offering, mandala practice that in the in the preliminary practices or other practice is you know right now because we are so attached to the to our not only to the object, you know, we are not really, actually, we are not attached to the object, we are attached to our idea of what that object represents, you know. For example, you are not really attached to your husband per se, you are at attachment to what, you know, the, not the person, but your idea of that person being your husband, being someone wonderful to you, you know. So that's why the moment your idea of he being, he or she being a wonderful husband changes, you don't have no attachment to that person, you know. You are happy if he has gone out to your life. You know? So when we do the offering, right, so what we are really trying to do, what we are really trying to give away offering is not, in the beginning it seems like we are offering the flower, but what we are really trying to give away or, or cut away is the, the concept of flower being flower. Concept of somebody being your husband, somebody being your friend, somebody being your enemy. That concept is what we are really trying to offer. Now why? Why do we want to do that? Why do we want to give away that concept? Because as long as we have that concept, we will never see the true reality of the things. 